Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at another gun that no longer exists. And first off, I'd like to give a big thank you to Matthew Moss of HistoricalFirearms.info. Uh, he has done the best job by far of putting together all of what little information there is on this gun, and he is the source that I'm referencing throughout this video. So thank you very much, Matthew, I appreciate it. Now, the gun we're going to, to discuss, I almost said take a look at, but there isn't one. Um, to the best of my knowledge, none of these guns actually exist today. There probably was only one ever in existence, and that is the Maschinengewehr des Standschütze Hellriegel, uh, or the machine gun from reservist Hellriegel. Uh, the only information about these consists of a couple of photographs that came out of uh, an Austrian military archive. They're dated October of 1915. And this gun was just kind of the occasional internet curiosity until Battlefield 1 came out, the World War I-based computer game. And uh, the guys behind Battlefield 1 decided to integrate this weapon into their game, and as a result, it is now a name widely known among gamers, and thus something that uh, comes up quite often. I get a lot of people asking about it. So, I figured, since I'm never actually going to encounter one of these for real, since there are none, uh, there's no reason not to talk about it right here in the comfort of my own office without having one. So, uh, like I said, these the photographs that exist, which are the sum total of what we know about this thing, basically all of the information that we have is extrapolated from these photographs. They were dated uh, October of 1915, and they show what appears to be the gun in testing. It, I, I should say, it obviously did not work well. Because if this gun had worked well, it would have gone on to further development, and we would know something more about it. The fact that there are only these three or four pictures mean that it just didn't work, and that's not that uncommon. Now, the basic uh, arrangement of this thing was, uh, it was pistol caliber, probably 9x23 Steyr. That's what the Austro-Hungarian Empire was using as their standard pistol cartridge at the time, although it is hypothetically possible that it could have been in 9mm Parabellum, it could have been in 9mm Hell Regal, or 8.32mm Hell Regal, or really anything else, we just don't know. Um, it was. It appears to have been a fully automatic weapon, uh, because it does have a, rather, a very large magazine capacity, and a lot of people describe it as like an early submachine gun which kind of makes sense. However, it was a water-cooled gun. You can clearly see a fill point on the water jacket. Uh, it has this kind of interesting sort of curved tubular, almost reminiscent of guns like the um, FN F2000, the tactical tuna, uh, grip on the bottom of the water jacket that you can see the, the shooter holding in one of the pictures. And it had, to, so I should say, almost certainly a blowback operated firearm, assuming it was in something like 9 Steyr, that would make it relatively easy to manufacture a water cooling system, because the, the tricky part of a water cooled barrel is sealing where the barrel goes through the jacket, because the barrel typically has to move. On a gun like a Maxim or a Vickers gun, that barrel is recoiling back and forth with each shot, and so you had to go to some length to get a properly fitted seal at the front and back of the barrel where it's moving. If you have a blowback uh, pistol caliber weapon like this, the barrel can be fixed, and then it's really easy to seal the, the water jacket around the barrel. So that's almost certainly what they did there. And then it was fed uh, in two different potential ways. One was a stick magazine, and you can see a couple of those in the one photo. And the other is a drum magazine, which you can see in several of the photos. The drum does not appear to have had a way to attach to the gun at that point. It sits off to the side, and it has this flexible feed chute that does connect into the gun. Um, just based on counting and estimating from the size of the drum, it's about 160 round capacity. So a lot, but that makes sense given the belt-fed machine guns of the time, which are typically fed by 250 round belts. So if reservist Hell Regal was trying to design a new weapon, and one would presume that he came up, what he wanted to come up with was probably taking a heavy machine gun and making it man-portable. So he reduced the caliber so that uh, the recoil was handleable, so that the weight of the gun was much, much reduced, uh, and then presumably came up with a gun that would be either fired from a fixed position, like a standard heavy machine gun, or could be picked up and carried on the move, and fired from the shoulder with a stick magazine, like, like you see in the pictures. It's a cool idea. 
Um, and it is actually very reminiscent of like what the Germans would do with the MG 0815. Same sort of idea. Take the heavy machine gun and make it man portable, make it something that troops can actually carry in a dynamic manner and use in an assault um, on a trench or other position, rather than uh, having a bolt action rifle and the machine guns all in the back where they can't really do you any good. So uh, it seems like a cool concept. The, in fact, the concept checks out. The idea is pretty cool. Clearly, it did not work. As I said at the beginning, if this thing had run reliably, we would have seen it developed further or at least had, had more record of it. Uh, a couple other things to point out. You'll see there is an assistant gunner in one of the pictures with a backpack that has a couple of nice little slots for drums. That's something very typical of World War I. Uh, you would see that with French Chocha gunners, where the both the gunner and the assistant gunners carried backpacks of magazines. Um, with the MG0815, there were crates to carry those drums because they were a little bit weird and bulky for backpacks. But that backpack concept certainly makes sense. Uh, and for a gun like this, you would absolutely have a crew. This isn't an individual sort of thing. And that may be something that a lot of people don't recognize about um, the, the tactics that developed by the end of World War I. They were all teams, four, five, six, or larger uh, teams of soldiers, each with a different role. So, uh, for example, with the MP18s, you would have one guy carrying an MP18 submachine gun, and you'd have a couple guys carrying drums for him because you weren't reloading those in combat and they were depleted fairly quickly. And so you had ammunition carriers, basically, who would have a, usually a, a basic weapon, a, a bolt-action rifle, and their primary job was to carry ammunition to supply the guy with the machine gun. So that backpack with the Hell Regal, that's the sort of thing you would expect to see. It really is unfortunate that none of these things survive to this day. Um, I mean, it's, it's cool that they put it into the video game so people become aware of it. It's just a shame that there's no chance of actually ever finding out more. So we are lucky that these few photographs did survive um, out of Austrian archives. And um, that's all we will ever know about these. Thanks for watching.